You are I, a treehouse master. But, thank you. Yes, you are. I'll show you. I, yeah. <laughs> thank you. How fun. That's very nice of you, Michael. And also, though, he's one of the original treehouse dreamers. It's driven by passion, you know, this whole thing. And should we get into the whole design talk? Because... I mean, you are the designer and chief. I mean, you come up with your designs. I'm more an engineer. Yes. All right? I've Basically. admired that forever, yes. You know, I'm, I'm a more practical guy. When I, my designs are more simple and stuff like that. This guy here comes up with all this stuff. But he's got a lot to yeah. show you and learn, you know, about, about the whimsical, you know, design. And, he, and it's amazing what stuff he puts together. So. Well, there's a lot of very good news. And, and the reason it's kind of rapid is that the... The trees give us a lot of what we need right off the bat. The, the really, really good news, this happens to me every time. <laughs> We're trying to do a TV show! So uh, what I'm going to tell you is how I go about coming up with some design and, and how to, uh, I think, practically create a, a viable, you know, responsible platform, okay? The, what sits on top of that platform is anybody's business. You know, you, you can do the Taj Mahal, I like to say, or you can do a gazebo. I don't want to get into that so much right now at this moment. What I want to get into is a really good platform design because you got to tie in the practical side with the dreamer side. Building is fun. Trying to be practical about how we're going to make the most simple platform, the least amount of parts, right? The trees respond better than we ever imagined they would in terms of growing that reaction wood and getting stronger even over time. And the trees can handle it. This is all very good news we're finding. You know, you might have a 20 foot span where in the early days we were like, Jesus, can we do that? I mean, is the tree gonna break? Now we know we can do that. And so, yes, you're gonna have to have a seven by 18 inch deep glue laminated beam, but the tree can handle it. As you go into the woods, you're gonna find the trees that you want. You know, let's say you've got seven acres of beautiful forest. Well, you walk out in the woods and right away you see the A number one, position A treehouse location. And the trees are all right there going, oh. You know, you walk around these trees because you'll find them and the hair will stand up at the back of your neck. I'm always looking for an area where you can get one beam up, you know, in here somewhere and another beam over, you know, ideally within 12 feet, you know, if you put a, two by 12 on edge across 12 feet, that's, you know, that's not bouncy. The Q factor is the queasy factor. So where Bill would have a hard time saying a two by 12 spans 17 feet, but that's what you end up with when you put your beams up there, you know, you're gonna be bouncing on that. And it's, you know, if you did that in your house, you might be a little upset with the builder, but if you're in a tree house, you know, Q factor, how high, you know, on a scale of one to 10, we've been up in the nine range every now and then where you're going, whoa. Ooh, that's probably a bad idea. I mean, if there's snow load and stuff, that's a really bad idea. Now that you've found your trees, we're pretty much done. And I'm, I'm not even kidding. It's so fun because you can only go outside of, you know, the bark of these trees. You can only go about eight feet in a cantilever. You know, let's say I'm the tree and I, and I got a beam going to nowhere. You know, eight feet, put a knee brace under that, or Michael does a lot of this up top. You know, you go past eight feet and you can do this, your Q factor goes way up, you're starting to get a little bit dangerous. The point of this is, once you find your trees, we're gonna measure between the trees and I wanna show you how we put that onto graph paper and get to scale. I think of people writing songs, you know, like how do you start writing a song, a new song? To me, that's impossible. People look at treehouse design like, how do you design a treehouse? We'll find your trees and it's like done. But you know, ideally you sit underneath these trees for a little while and you see that, oh yeah, well, that's a beam for sure. In fact, I'll start with that beam. What if I put a post here? <gasps> a ground mounted strut. Okay, I'm guilty. I love putting posts in when I need one. And I think it's still a tree house. So don't kill yourself over the fact that your post isn't, you know, is maybe part of the deal. That I think is what I want to, tell you and then now what I'm gonna do is tell you what I told you by showing you so we're gonna go over there and we're gonna have a moment where we can sort of see what what I was just explaining like when you're there you know it you know like the easiest situation is four trees 
two beams, joists. This is what you all have to remember is that there's, there's when, when a tree moves, the trunk in particular, the forces are so tremendous that it will break any of this hardware that you see here. I mean, it'll, it'll wiggle it and worry it and it'll bust right behind the boss, it'll break. And we've seen this. And if you think that you're somehow gonna be able to tie these trees together, you're mistaken. And Okay, so let's go over to those trees. Um, what I'm gonna do there is show you how I measure things. And let's say you've got, I don't know how many acres Michael has, but you know, you, you're looking for trees you come over here and your life is instantly easy. Look, oh my God, you've got, you've got two options. One, a beam across these guys, one this way, one this way, or the second option, one this way and one this way. But you know, with that 12 foot thing, I think that we can guess this is 20 feet or so and we'll, we'll do all this measuring. But does everyone agree that this is like the easiest set of trees that you can ever imagine for a tree house and does, does everyone see this? So if you want to spend a lifetime building a platform, we're going to go see what the setups look like there. I mean, sometimes you only have the trees you have and they may not be like this, but this, this is as easy as it gets. So you put a tab in the tree, one, two, you know, uh, let's just do the span. Would you hold that, Dale, just against that? 21 feet, 22 feet. I'm thinking, okay, platform height, that, I think that wire is too high for me. I, I'd be down, but this is just me, I'd be down at 12 or 14 feet. I'll show you what that looks like. You know, if I imagine I'm up that high, I'm gonna go bark to bark and I'm gonna make notes here now. Okay, I'm seeing 23 feet. I, I've got examples of what these surveys look like in this little book, because this is all I bring. I bring this and a tape and a pencil. I'm thinking that this is the set of trees, we know that. This one's here, this one's here. Fill these boxes in with measurements. You know, combinations of all. You've got four trees here. So, you know, one, two, three. This tree, and I, and I number them. So I'm gonna call that tree number one, tree number two, number three, number four, no particular reason for that order. And then we just saw 23 feet, zero inches. I get the diameter, yeah. 28 inches, that might be. So I go tree number two here, 28 inch diameter. Tree number one, I'll do the same thing over there. You get all the combinations of, of the numbers here, right? And then I always use half inch scale. Quarter inch is a typical scale for architects. Um, I love this. Uh, this is the stuff that I get, this, uh, this graph paper. You know, it's sort of see-through so you can have you know, you can layer things up and, uh, and see through it, right? When you do the layout like this, all the angles become apparent. So say one and two right here in front of us will begin the whole thing. And here's, here's a really simple way to do it. I know I'm gonna have a beam and that beam is gonna be straight as an arrow. And that beam is also, in my experience, there's nothing less than a six inch by 18 inch to span 23 plus middle of the trees, you know, you're talking 24, 25 feet. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, to scale, half inch scale, draw this beam in here. Boom, boom. Make it a little fatter by getting underneath that template a bit. And we have 23 feet across. I've dropped off three inches because, you know, the tabs, the, the Garnier limbs, have a little boss that sticks out three inches or so before that beam hits. There's 23 feet, and this one we're gonna guess, is that about the same size or a little smaller? A little smaller. Just a couple inches smaller. So we'll call it 24. So we, have, we know that 13 feet here is right there. 23 feet here is, there's 20, 20, 21, 22, 23. Boom. And Here's where that arcs out, boom, doo, 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 doo. Okay, so then you just adjust over here, 13 is more back this way. And that guy is a 26 inch tree. So you see how I arc that and that just kisses there and this just kisses there and we've got our 21. And you just bring this little template up and you kiss it against those arcs you made. And there it is in real, that's it. There's no arguing about that, it's there. Okay, so then this guy is, uh, and it's only 19 inches in diameter, and this guy gets in there, and you, you're done with this. You, you, you're, you're set. This is set in concrete. This now you get to play with. 
okay, so you're going to put a beam over here. We know this. We might as well. And it doesn't have to be, you know, parallel is what I was going to say. You just do what the tree is giving you. Three inches out there, there's the boss. Oh, well, look at that. <laughs> you know? You know, I try to have all the joists stay a good foot, foot off the bark of the tree. You know, these, these big beams, you know, they're going to, these trees are going to grow and they're eventually going to hit against that beam. And, you know, for a long time, I just imagine maybe it just pushes the, the beam off the, to the end of the tab, like a, like a sidewalk gets lifted by the roots of a tree. And I'm not sure that that's really happening. Once the weight's on this thing, that the tree might start bolster blocking and absorbing it. And really nice bark behind that. And, uh, you know, I'd imagine in the early days that, you know, you do that and then what's happening behind? Is it like bubbling and festering and becoming a big, rotty problem? It's not. It's like you, we've pulled beams off of these trees and there's beautiful bark behind everything. So, so the, you know, the next level of structure is the joist. And I would love to say, put those joists as far away as you can from the tree. So pressure treated joists um, or cap everything and then put your deck down. Um, another, another thing, you know, as you start to build on top of your platform that I've noticed, um, let's say that the edge of your, your structure, whatever you decide to draw, is, is here. You know, you've got a wall coming down. And just make sure that, that, you know, put another joist in here, even if it doesn't lay on the two foot setup, put a joist in there. Make sure that you've got, you know, an inch or two of room between the face of your building and the decking. Let all that slide down. And then on this side where you can't do it, where you know you've got your joist running right through the building, flash the bejesus out of it here. Make sure that there's a water break. You know, like cut it even a little bit and put it, your flashing down there, make it a nice drip edge and just make sure you get, because that water that comes down into that creeps back in here and rots all that out. I've been getting into all this heavy-duty hardware lately is even in June we're doing things that we've never done before that are you know over the top ridiculous connections to trees. Here's a heavy-duty connection there's a sub beam that runs this direction underneath one two three four beams this connection here is I call it the Frankenstein you know where you took you put two heavy duty limbs, like not just a GL, but an inch and three quarter fat so. You just capture them with a full metal jacket, you know, quarter inch steel wrapped all the way around. These are probably, you know, seven by 18 inch glue laminated beams that stretch 16 feet. And then they're gonna pass over that sub beam. Well, I told you we didn't have a, a tree over here. So we recently made a tree structurally. We, you know, you can take a, a like a 10 inch steel pipe and put that into a four foot deep five by five concrete block and make a tree <laughs> if you have to i don't want to but i have to so up it goes 17 feet to the sub beam which travels across to this tree here and is captured by not one but two heavy duty hls heavy limbs with a full metal jacket that is that big glue lamb beam has a wrap of high density, ultra high density molecular weight, UHMW plastic, like Teflon cutting board stuff. So when this tree moves, as it will, this way, this way, doesn't matter. I've got it gimbaled over here off this fake tree. It's gimbaled in just, you know, that, that one direction. And that gives the tree the ability to move around underneath each one of these beams that sits on top of it. Some more UHMW both on the top of that lower beam, the sub beam and the beam that sits on it. So that's easy to slide around. Then you come over here and to get way out to tree number four out here, I've got this other fracas that is this full steel channel that wraps around all sides through bolt the tree here and then 90 degrees other direction through bolt the tree there. You got steel pipe coming down to this guy. This is all rigid in this tree. This all moves. Everything moves, moves, and they can move freely. It's just a matter of spending the time to think of how this might work together and still support something that's substantial. By the way, there was a second story. They want to do a bedroom on top of the bar. So this thing's going to weigh 50,000 pounds of structure. It's going to be heavy. 
So, to, so let your mind, you know, by all means, think about what it looks like, the structure that's on top of your platform. But the point of all this talk today is how do you make a good solid platform that's going to withstand wind and uh, time. <laughs>